letting smoke go into the machine, we are a good four foot out from the front of it, but we have the opening, the only opening that we have in the table is that one open right back here. That way a lot of the smoke will go in to that opening there. Now we'll change it to where we'll have the opening right up here in the front and you'll see a significant difference. Okay, now we just put the opening right there in the front. You really see it circling through there. And now it's just going right in the front there. And again, we're over, we're over four feet from the front of that machine. Extending. This is the cylinder that controls the speed that it comes down. Very, very critical. Without that, it slams up and slams down. This little nozzle right there is what controls that speed. Now you can increase and decrease how fast it goes up and down by your compressed air. The 80 to 85 pounds on the air regulator is what will control that. Don't play with this thing. This thing is very, very touchy. Okay, now we're going to show the lid raising. Up. You push the button, it goes up. That way that you can bring in your product. You can pull her down, and it comes down. and ready to go to work. Okay, this video is to just to show you the parts of the machine, and that's the on and off switch for the motor. This is the magnetic gauge. This tells you the condition of the filters that are down there, the two big filters, that how you clean them out is wash them out. Okay, very important. Never sand or grind aluminum, magnesium on this machine. Now. When the needle approaches the red, remove the main filters. Wash out with plain or soapy water, but keep high pressure nozzle at least six inches away from the filter. And that way you don't tear up the fibers on the filter. We don't have it set on there yet, but there'll be a red, there'll be a red line on here. So as that needle starts to go up and approaching that red line, you know that your main filters are starting to plug up. condition it really cleans them out clean filters allows more air to flow through when you're not getting air to flow through the filters you're not getting air to go into there which is removing it from the operator clean filters is the complete key at this this is very important very important 
Behind this door and up there is a metal filter. Because of the grinding wheel glue and the sanding paper debris, whether you use flap sanders or whatever, that stuff is very flammable. These filters must be removed and cleaned after every eight hours of use. Either wash out with water or blow out with compressed air. You've just got to get the debris off of those metal filters. You get that debris stuck inside there, you get sparks created from whatever you're grinding here that gets into there. You can catch that debris on fire. With that much wind going through here, you're going to suck that fire into the main filters. You've also got a filter underneath here as it goes underneath here, you got the same type of filter. If for any reason, and I'm not going to say it's never happened, but it's been a very, 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 very rare incident. You ever get the main filters on fire, hit it with, hit this area right in here or the table with a fire extinguisher and that sucks all that stuff right to the fire. sticker down below that we just read about. We had to build a, a deal out for this filter so we just made a shelf up there. You can also store some stuff back in here. Okay, light switch that turns your light on above the booth. Okay, raise the knob to raise the lid. Lower the knob. This is the knob. You raise it to raise up the lid. You lower it to lower it. Lower it pinch point. Keep your fingers away from there. This is the air regulator. 80, 82 pounds is about what it takes to, to regulate the regulated air to make this lid work properly. Okay, we're going to show you the how to you're going to have to set the magnetic gauge, figure out your readings. We're sending it with a plastic bag on it. Because what we do is we set the plastic bag up on the filter like this. We bring it all the way up to about, oh, two thirds, three quarters of the height. Pretty well, it just fills the complete plastic bag up. When you, the machine is running, it just sucks the, the plastic bag right to the filter so it holds it in place. You will have a plastic bag on both filters. We will send them with the bag, but during shipment, I'm sure the bag will all slide down to the bottom. So the very first thing that you will want to do is once you get it running, is to, is to turn it on, raise the bag up. You can reach right around the front filter to the back filter, slide the bag up on the filter. And uh, that way that whenever you turn the machine on, the only air that it's going to get is right across the top here on both filters. And that will be a very close resemblance of your filter being about two thirds plugged up. And that will give you the reading on the magnetic gauge of where you need to set on the sticker. And I'll show you the picture of the sticker here in a little bit of where you have to set your numbers at. So now we will set the filters inside the machine so you can see what that looks like. The filter caps, these are the filter caps and there's a piece of plastic that is fastened underneath here that slides on top of the pipe and that's what makes it very slick to slide in. Now he's gonna place the filters in. Take the filter in slide it in there, put it on top of the pipe, push it all the way back. It's all the way back to the back hole back here. Okay, now the filter is in. Plastic bag, like I said, I'm sure during shipment the plastic bag will fall down. You just pick up the plastic bag and bring it back up to the top like this. 
and that way that whenever you turn it on that will become the obstruction simulating the obstruction of a plugged filter and then that will give you the reading on your mag helic gauge now go ahead and pull them in now tighten up the filter you just pull these in together you have a hole that lines up right there and there's a bolt that inserts into there that locks them in place and this is all set on an eccentric and that way that when you turn those handles that raises and filters up and locks the seals against the inner plate that's up on the inside of that hole there. This is the drawer that uh, any debris, in your situation, these, these uh, machines do not pulse because these filters have to be washed out. You probably will not catch much debris in this drawer here. Now in these machines you have a drawer, and this one's not in here, but you'll have a drawer that sits here. You will get a lot of debris in here because that is below this surface of this table. Now this is on the Magni Heli gauge. This is what determines the condition of your filters if it's about to plug up. Now, because of every machine has a different reading, that's the reason why that we have the plastic bag. We send a plastic bag with this machine. Whenever you get the machine hooked up and running, since we have the plastic bags on there, you will get this number here. And you will write take like a felt tip marker and if the this needle sitting down here somewhere as this needle rises up and it comes over to here it may be four four and a half it may even go as high as five then that will be the number that you want to put here then you take the bags off turn the machine back on and your number will probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of here to here. And that is the number that you will want to put, the number you will want to put in this box. And that will show you what a brand new filter reads. And that way that you know how much movement this thing has. Now, after this filter is a few months old and you're cleaning it out, it will never come back down to that line, but it'll get pretty close to it. But as it starts to plug up, the needle starts moving over here towards this other side. Okay, this is the filter unit. And on top of the filter unit is this little sign right here. And there's a hole right there you will be able to, whenever you place the motor unit on top of this, you will have a quarter inch length of quarter inch diameter hose about 20 inches long. And you will poke that hose down through there and then you can open up the door on the inside and you can pull it down as it starts to lower down on top of this. And as you set it on top of here, get it bolted on, you'll have about a, you know, almost 20 inch long hose on the inside. Your filter unit, just take a pair of side cutters or a knife and just reach up in there and cut that hose off to where you have about two or three inches sticking through the inside the filter unit and it will sit beside the outside of the filter that goes into the Meg Helic gauge which reads the filter condition but that hose all it does is it reads the pressure differential between the inside and the outside and this is the only hose that you have to put in is just this one hose and you'll see it sticking down at the bottom of the motor slash fan unit. Okay, when you get this machine, you'll have these, you'll have this bracket here that will have to be screwed on. 
this here, well, no, I'm sorry, this here is part of this. You'll have to bolt this on here. This top comes off. This will already come screwed together. This here, you'll have to place these bolts into the top. The top will have come off, and you'll have to put this whole top, this whole top side, got the fan and the motor, you'll have to set it on here. This bolt here will have to be put on. There's a nylon washers in between. Those bolts will have to be put on. This top, this bearing, and everything stays with this. So this will all come together, assembled, and the top will already be attached to this.